Okay, so everybody, welcome to uh, Industry of Impact, Automated Marketing's live stream and podcast. And we basically like to get people, extraordinary people, who are uh, doing things that are having a positive impact on society, on their communities, and on the business community. So we like to get them on here and talk to them. Um, my name is Bill Allen, and I'm head of sales for Automated Marketing. And my two co-hosts I have with me, Julian and Stephanie Meir. If you want to go ahead and say hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How's it going, LinkedIn? All right. And I'll, on to our guest for today. Um, we have uh, Jeff and Dana. I want to make sure I say it correctly, though. Is it Holfeld or Holfeld? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Holfeld. That, I'm not I, sure I heard a difference there. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, it was, I don't know if you pronounced the D or not was my question yeah right well and i was rushing her getting signed on she's now technically a dellinger if that's okay but <laughs> i said go go just put ho felt that's it will okay. be the brother's sister it from the old name. days it was my name for a long time i actually saw that on the website and i was like oh that? <laughs> that's odd yeah. but that's yeah me. that was Very just good. me being a bossy older I'm brother married. that's okay, okay. <laughs> so, so did you guys grow up in detroit is that what i read Grew up right outside Detroit, Gross Point, Michigan. Very cool. So, so maybe we we kind of talk about um, the business a bit, Jeff. And, yeah. You know, I think it's an extraordinary business. I, I understand that it's third generation. Um, yes. And and the Mir family is in kind of the same space. This is a second generation business, I believe. No, we're or also third. third. We're also third, third yeah. generation. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. High five. Air high five. <laughs> yeah. So so tell me a little bit about. Uh, for both of you, if you will. Yeah, sure. Do you want to, uh, about us personally or about the business? Yeah, yeah, whatever you want to talk about. This is about you and, and your business and what you do. Okay, yeah, sure. So my name is Jeff Hofeld. I'm the vice president of Northern Industrial Manufacturing. We are a tier one automotive supplier. Got customers like General Motors, some of the bigger players, ZF Industries, predominantly automotive. And we produce what's called a, sh a shim selective fit thrust washer shim spacer all generally are about the same we make up the tolerance stack up from the entire supply chain for for customers that make axles transmissions components like that companies in harrison township and we've got just under 50 employees and under 20 million in revenue and we only make that one product so we do stamp and grinding and color coding and a variety of other different in-house in-house techniques that we're processing and everything we do is metal very cool very nice. and so when i was looking at kind of the what the supply chain looks like right i, I was i was fascinated because i didn't know this existed where they actually uh the manufacturers will make a rough product and then send it to you to make it as near perfect as you can get it, right? As you were talking about how much it costs to get a perfect product, right? Right, so that's 90% of the way there. So the only difference would be is they're gonna, the customer's application, the transmission, the axle, they're gonna design all of the other components in a more rough state. So they're okay. gonna buy it from a bunch of different suppliers, bring it in, and then at the very end, after they've assembled all the rougher parts, they're going to have slop in their design. They measure that slop and then they'll come to us to make up that small section of the slop, if you will. Gotcha. So when they bring them all together, they'll measure it and it'll say minus three. They'll then put a plus three of our shim in minus three plus three is zero. That's exactly what they want to have. And now all of those components go together nicely. Very well, cool. That is a very fascinating niche, I have to say. It is very, 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 very niche business. Yeah, and judging by the amount of awards that are on your, you know, on your website, um, it's obvious that you do an incredible job of it, right? We do. Yeah, thank you. We're really proud of our team and the accomplishments. And these are not the easiest customers to deal with when you're talking about the OEMs that have the very rigorous demands and a lot of volumes and forecasting scheduling issues and. Yeah, we do it. We do a great job. The team does a phen phenomenal job. Yeah, I, I also understand that you that you don't necessarily get forecasting or anything. It just like comes in, 
Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because right. we have to wait for all of the other suppliers to have their product assembled. So quite literally, the plant doesn't know how the other suppliers are doing until the, the parts are there. They've installed them. They've measured our part and installed it. And so every, every day is a new and different day because of the 20, 50, 100 different suppliers in that supply chain loop, if any one of them has a day where they change a tooling and it becomes a little bit different than it was yesterday, it changes the whole stack. Wow. Are you yeah. currently at the manufacturing plant right now? You know what? Right now, this actually worked out. So I'm visiting uh, my sister, Dana, who's the founder of a nonprofit down in Hilton Head doing the manufacturing t-shirts. I won't steal her thunder, but we're actually together there. Okay. In Hilton Head. Oh, wow. It looked like it was a manufacturing plant. It kind of is. We have yeah. a, a warehouse and it is not pretty, yeah. but Got it's it. amazing and it's an efficient workspace. <laughs> so what, what inspired you to start Pockets Full of Sunshine? Okay. And tell, so, us a little, tell us a little bit about it first. Maybe. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. So um, Pockets Full of Sunshine um, was started back in really 2015. Um, actually, Joff was kind of really instrumental in starting it. He was sitting in a meeting and saw, and let's see how I do this. You just see this um, cute little sunshine right here. Mm -hmm. So he, he said, what are those cute sunshines? You know, what are they doing on your desk to this big company? And um, he said, could I send them to my sister? She's a special ed teacher. And he said, absolutely. You can send as many of them as you want. And so I got a box of them and just the wheels in my brain started turning and I started talking to people here in Hilton Head. We have an incredible community, but there are gaps missing with our special needs population as they age out of school at 21. So in other states, it might be older. In Michigan, it's 26. They graduate from high school at 26. They may stay in high school longer. Here at 21, you are out. You've got to figure out something else to do. If you can't get a job, there's maybe one place to go, a day, a day program type, but it's not free. So we started Pockets Full of Sunshine back in the day using, re, you know, trying to reuse materials. Maybe explain to them about the sunshine, yeah, where they come from. Sure. So this, I can see yeah. them. This, come, this actually is over where the radiator fluid goes in cars it comes it looks like a gear of some sort yeah yeah and it's they're thin and it's almost like really um high quality laminated paper you can put it in your mouth it can get wet it doesn't get ruined it's perfect for in case you're a goat them. and you want to eat some paper yes. <laughs> and they're throwing them away they're they landfill. couldn't going to the landfill couldn't make money off of them couldn't i mean donate them anywhere so we started i was a full-time special ed teacher started talking to friends. I started Pockets with two other women, a speech therapist and a mother of a child with special needs who was going to age out of high school. And we put our heads together and we started crafting on the weekends. We had a card line, you know, good morning, sunshine, or, you know, whatever. Hello, sunshine, or, you know, brighter days ahead. And we started with just cards crafting with people with special needs and it was free. We'd provide a snack, a couple hours for parents to, or caregivers to have time away and go, you know, go to the grocery store, go have coffee with a friend. You forget that people with special needs, if they don't have somewhere to go, they're at home with, mm -hmm. with their parents. Um, some are aging parents at that. And so we wanted to provide a place, an opportunity to have meaningful work, communication, skills, and social opportunities, um, but also community opportunities. So as we got started, we just expanded from cards to crafting, and then we started screen printing. So my shirt, it says local. We've got tons of different designs. Um, we do other people's logos. Like I could do shirts with your logo on it, but for us to get into the community, we have a really great graphic designer. She helps us with our logos and we go into the community in Hilton Head, which has a lot of tourists and people coming and going and we sell our wares. Um, that was back in 2015. We are 
we now we have less than 10 employees, but we serve 45 people a month, people with special needs. We've got a social program. We've got a horseback riding program. We've got three days of vocational programming. And then we have, you know, just things going on all the time. It's a big just, warehouse. We have a very big warehouse space that is actually donated space. We're nice. incredibly blessed. Hilton Head is the greatest community to be in. Um, we write grants and we have fundraisers and um, people are just very, very kind here. And there's a big need. Um, yeah. yeah. It's great. There's an awesome movie theater like 20-ish minutes away from here in Ridgefield, Connecticut called yes. The Prospector. Sounds and awesome. they do the exact same thing. They hire adults with disabilities. I've heard of like that. 75% of it's staff. It's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, times have changed so drastically in our country um, working with people with special needs. And I think that, you know, the inclusion aspect of the community, I just last week had a elementary school come in and volunteer with us. Now I have people in their fifties, almost sixties, and they're working side by side with our community aged children. And that's how you create a community with a lot of love and a lot of acceptance and inclusion. So it's really, it's wonderful. Amazing, amazing. Um, Jeff, so on the on your company's website, um, I noticed you have like an entire section um, dedicated to the importance of giving back. Yeah, um, yeah. So how is it that brother and sister duo dynamic, um, you know, kind of are both in that space. So your company obviously finds this very important and then you also founded this. Yeah, I think it starts at the top. Obviously our dad, uh, the current owner of the company always makes it his mission to give back. In fact, um, just recently we've adopted an employee benefit that literally pays our employees one full day to go out into the community. So instead of taking a vacation day or a sick day, we actually encourage our employees and compensate our employees, even if it's on a Saturday, to go out in the community, be a part of it, get involved. One of the things our dad always says to the employees is that what you put in to a community is what you're able to get back from the community. Right. And so we've really been able to encourage our employees to take that next step to join a church program, to serve a soup kitchen, to volunteer with, with either veterans or adults with disabilities. And it's just been a good program. And I think it goes a long way to reminding everybody, including our employees, that there's always people out there who may have it harder, who may have it more challenging. And it, it really humanizes, I think it humanizes us to be able to, to give back in that way. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Honestly, it's um, it's really cool to see, you know, thriving family run businesses that are thinking in these terms because there's, you know, companies that are very profitable. And when we kind of direct it that way and exactly what your father said about, you know, what you give is what you get. And um, I think that, you know, comes through all levels of personal and business life. So that's a really cool philosophy that your company is involved with there. I love that. So how long have you been involved in the business? Did your dad take you when you were a kid? And did you know this was something you wanted to do? Did you always love shims so much? I tell you what, it's kind of ironic. So no, I definitely uh, did not always love shims or even really know. So we, we knew, we grew up going there as kids and yep. certainly knew that the business, the family business was manufacturing. Yep. But it's kind of ironic when, when I graduated college, I ended up joining a company called Timken. And Timken is a Fortune 500 bearing manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because they spent a whole bunch of money training me and allowing me to really understand the application. And I went out and spent seven years in the field, doing the applications, doing the work, working with customers, designing these specific specific applications, and then got the offer to come back and, and work for Northern. And my first day we go to our largest customer 
and he's taking me there. And quite literally, not even this can't even make this up. They're pulling Timken bearings outside of Timken boxes. They're pulling Northern shims, slapping them together and installing them into an axle. And I'm like, dad, this is what you do. I know all about this. I have, in fact, I probably know more about it than you do at this point. because <laughs> I've had all this training. We could have been working together. I, I, so my first call was actually Timken to say, Hey, I'm now a shim guy. Let's, let's talk. So, um, oh, it's, just, awesome. it's kind of funny how the world works that way, but, um, it wasn't always slated to go into the family business. It was never a pressure. It was never a given. We didn't have a job when we graduated. And, and of course we're both so proud of, of Dana and her venture down at Hilton Head. We're here now. There's no way we're getting her back. No. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> just. Hilton Head or Detroit. <laughs> Gee, that, that's a, that's a tough choice right there. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, so, similarly, we never had any of the pressure from our father, but and we're on very different trajectories and then found our way back. Yeah. So I, I guess a, a, an interesting question for uh, for the whole group. Mm -hmm. So what's the age difference between and who got better grades? And hold on. This is this is our favorite game. We like to guess. <laughs> we like to have people guess. We I like it. sort of gave it away at the beginning. Yeah. Um, we could guess the difference in age, but you did say you were older. But who's older? And we don't get offended. There is. Oh. Like, there's no way of telling. <laughs> there's no way of telling. You guys look like you could possibly be. Twins. Wait, yeah. Are you twins? <laughs> twins. Yeah. Fraternal. No. 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 no we're, we're. I got nothing. Got nothing? All right. No. I'm older. Are you? Yeah. Bye. People would like to usually get like because half. of the beard and he's taller than me. But four well, years and four years, years and three days. days. Yeah, four years and three days. Oh wow. No way. Cool. Yep. Cool. Yep. And how about you guys? What's the age gap? Just two years. Two. Just two okay. years. I'm yeah. older. Yeah, he's older. And I don't know who got, I don't we didn't neither of us got particularly outstanding grades. Yeah, or bad. <laughs> we were just mediocre students. And then when we, when we went to college is when we started studying our passions and we got great grades, but in high school right. we really didn't. Yeah. We were just I mean, obviously I was way cooler, but <laughs> all else aside, I think we That's got really the way it is with the older siblings, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I might get slapped under the table. Smart. Yeah, right. Smart. yeah. Good move. Good That's move. Great. All right, this this is this is one that uh our VP loves to ask people, pineapple pizza. How's it make you feel? Yeah, I'm all right with it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Wow. It's not my first choice, but yeah, I mean, I don't like anchovies. I'm okay but... with it. <laughs> Did you guys get along as kids? Or yeah. You oh yeah. We were very, we've always been very close. I mean, always. Always. Yeah. 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 What about you guys? Yeah, definitely. Let's I mean, play. we had our moments. Don't get of course, <laughs> of course, of course, too. Yeah, but, yeah, but always, always had each other's backs, no matter yes. what. Yes. Same with us. Same. Do you have any Same. other siblings? Just us. Just us. Just us. Yeah. Y'all too. What about you? You two? Yep, yeah. just the two of us. So cool. How is it working together? I mean, I know you. I'm, you're supposed to be asking us questions, but is that an interesting dynamic? Because working with dad, in our case, in my case, is interesting, but working with dad and sister so closely could get interesting. I mean, we literally used to share this office. Um, and I've literally, I've just moved out because we're on the phone too much now. We used to do a lot more just computer stuff and I didn't, I, you know, I would listen into some and he'd listen into some. And um, so now I guess it's like good to have a little bit of space, but honestly, I kind of miss him. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the dynamic, you know, it's always, it's always an interesting balance, and luckily we have very opposing skill sets yeah. that um, you know they complement each other in a lot of ways, and we really like to do different things. So it's not like we're vying for the same uh, space at all. Um, but you know, I think with anything, it all comes down to really crystal clear communication and really making sure you're seeing from the other person's perspective. Because obviously, you know, if she's really pushing for something within the business, um, you know, it has to be taken into consideration the same way it would be family member or not. So trying to be, um, 
you know, as non-biased as possible, I think is really important. And then also just, I think one of the most interesting things for me is, you know, you have the personal relationship, the family relationship outside of business, and then the relationship inside the business. And people don't really get that those lines are almost impossible to separate. So just like keeping people happy outside translates to keeping people happy inside and vice versa. So, and it's um, interesting because we see each other all the time here, but we're always very occupied with our own portions of the day. So sometimes I feel like I don't even say three words to him, you know, it's like, Hey, good morning. And yeah. then I'm over there and you're over there. And, um, it's actually nice to spend some time with each other outside of work and do something hang fun out. where we actually get to hang out, you know, hang out. Yeah. So that's not, so even though we're here and I, I really love the fact that my dad's here and my brother's here and I actually get to see them and maybe sit down and have lunch with them. But um, as he said, we just have our unique abilities. And so for the most part, they don't really cross too often. So <laughs> what are some of the challenges that you find with, family business and some of the maybe couple top two, three tips or recommendations for other people in family businesses. Yeah. So I think one of the, you mentioned, you mentioned the kind of the gray area. One of the, I think one of the biggest challenges any family business has is look, it's your dad. I mean, it's, is it my dad or is it my boss? Who's calling me right now? It's the right. middle of the day. I'm in Hilton Head getting ready to go on a podcast. Is it, my dad talking about taking out his boat or is it my boss talking about, you know, a very important client meeting that we have next week. And so I think sometimes that's a big challenge is, is being able to keep it separate enough, but not separate because at the end of the day, we, you know, we are building a family business and the word family is in there. And so yep. it, what, what he's coming up with his ideas not only is he the boss, but he's family. My idea is same same thing. And and you mentioned the crystal clear communication. I think making sure that people aren't sweeping issues under the rug. I mean, it's no different than I guess a relationship you would have with a spouse, a girlfriend, or what have you. But having that communication, level setting expectations, and just trying to make sure that everybody's on the same page as best as you can, mostly done through communication. Yep. The other advantage we have sounds like it's similar to what you have. It's funny, we're, we're working with, with a consultant right now on kind of transitioning the business, helping with some of my leadership skills. And we did a disc assessment. And the disc assessment, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Absolutely. It basically is yeah. how you manage, how you lead, what type of person you are. And it's, it's, we knew this on paper, but it was fun to see. My dad and I are super opposites. So I'm a, I'm a DI, which is dom dominating and influencing. And he is an SC, which is going to be, uh, now I'm not sure what it is, but it's, he's, he's very much more what is it? It's more commanding style. Commanding. Yep. Yeah. It's more commanding and more uh, com so social. So he wants the data and he wants people's input and I want the results and I, I sort of want it now. And so where I'm kind of taking the business, trying to progress it forward very quickly, maybe not having all the steps, he's trying to have all the steps and progress the business very steadily and mm -hmm. so we've got a really in this case a really good thing going but i think yeah. understanding that dynamic in your family i think is very important because now all of a sudden you understand if i'm presenting my dad something he needs a ton of data mm -hmm. all of the data and then even when you present him all of the data there's more data that's needed right, right. instead of getting frustrated with your dad just being your dad Mm -hmm. it's, it's him being that 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 flow of communication with very commanding and needing all of the data. Yep. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Being aware of what different types of people need for that communication. That, that takes a lot of 
practice and time and self-awareness also to be patient enough to actually do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's interesting because the, the dynamic must be very different. Um, but the, the same challenges exist, whether you're family or not, right. It's the same exact thing, especially if your it friends does. outside the business, right? That's right. Yep. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. So I, I'd like to get one last thing in here. Uh, probably end, end pretty soon. Um, I almost had a special guest on, uh, he unfortunately couldn't make it. Um, but I, I it would have been a nice kind of alignment Dana with what you do. Um, his name is Michael Ray and, uh, I'm hoping to get him on a future podcast. Maybe I can get him on with you, Dana, oh, I um, love it. because what he does is, uh, he goes out into the community and he spends most of his time helping the same people you're helping. So I thought it would be extraordinary to link you guys up, but I, unfortunately he couldn't make it. Um, I would but, love to meet him. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll put you in contact with him on LinkedIn. Be anyway. Great. Okay. Love it. Thank you. Um, so the, the last concept I'd like to kind of cover is, is what does the future look like for each of our organizations? And certainly, you know, love to hear from my CEO as well. Right. But uh, kind of what does the future look like for you guys? Sure. Yeah. So the future for pockets full of sunshine is bright. Actually, we are going full steam ahead. Um, these past couple of years, we've really been established in the community here in Hilton Head, but also on a national level. A couple of years ago, we were the PGA second runner up um, charity of the year. Just That's like just on a bigger level. Yeah, we've got yeah. some uh, really good press with CBS, just like on mm -hmm. national TV. Um, we are growing right now. We have a waiting list for our programming. We just moved to three days a week and now we're already filling up our fourth day. So once that happens, we'll have four days of vocational. Eventually we'll be five days. There is such a need here, especially because so many people move to Hilton Head and retire and their children are adults. And so those are the people that we're getting people who are moving here from Ohio and Michigan and Pennsylvania right. to get out of the snow. And they just happen to have a child with special needs who, is not, they don't qualify to be in high school because of their age. Um, yes, we are growing. Um, we're saving up for a building. We'd like to purchase our own building. Real estate is very expensive in Hilton Head. Um, yeah, we have certainly five, is. <laughs> we have fundraisers for that. We just bought our um, very first party van. It's like a big, beautiful black limo almost. Um, we really believe that people with special needs deserve to ride around in style. It's, I mean, it's got hardwood floors and a little table and a little bar in it. Just, it's nice. It's beautiful. And that's what they deserve. So every single year we're making progress. Um, we're growing. We've got new volunteers literally every week signing up, coming to try us out. Some of them are little itty bitty. They might be five years old, but they might be retired special ed teachers who have just moved to the area and they just want purpose one or two days a week. Um, so in regards, my, our, our 90 year old grandparents just moved here and he, our grandfather just left. He's going to be 91 and he volunteers one or two days a week, has a little workshop upstairs in my warehouse and he does our wood drills holes and does his, all his wood stuff anyway so yeah we don't turn away a volunteer um and we're always accepting we actually call our people with special needs rays our rays of I sunshine which is why i wanted to meet your friend mr ray um but that, yeah that's interesting isn't it it wow. is and that's why i think i need to meet him because it sounds like we are yeah we would we would get along um but yeah, anyway. absolutely and yeah. by the way, sunshine does feel good. You guys are hundred percent. It correct. does. Oh my gosh. It does. Everyone we meet, there's the universe. I mean, even the weather, like things just are good things surround us. Awesome. Are these the same Thank grandparents you. that founded Northern? Yeah. So the grand, uh, my dad's dad. Yeah. Um, so this would not be the same. This is my, this is my mom's mom. Okay. 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 Got it. Cool. Yeah. And how about you? Yeah, so for for Northern Industrial, the definitely the future is very bright. We've been putting a lot of things in place. One of the big transitions that the automotive space is currently seeing is the flight to electrified vehicles. So the thought process is you're seeing companies making big announcements, taking their internal combustion engine platforms, ramping them down, trying to ramp up their electrified vehicle platforms. And so the business for a lot of these automotive manufacturers is being forced to transition. And so we're currently working 
with three or four electric vehicle manufacturers. Some of the some of them are the purely electrified vehicle manufacturers that you've heard of. Some of them are more the internal combustion engine manufacturers that you've also heard of that are now making EVs, electric vehicles. But it's going to be more of the same. We know we're going to be still the world's number one manufacturer of this very selective type of product, this, this shim thrust washer spacer type market. And we're expanding into closer tolerance material. So right now uh, we've just purchased, we've just landed a grinder last year and we're landing another one the end of this year. This grinder is capable of producing these metal parts to a tolerance plus or minus one one hundredth of the human hair. Wow. So if you divide a human hair into a hundred, we can actually probably take it to 200, but I won't exaggerate. So we'll leave it at 100. And quite literally, in addition to being able to grind that close of a tolerance, we're doing about 3000 an, an hour. So a lot of the aerospace companies, they can, they can hit those tolerances, but they only need to make 200 a year. Mm-hmm. We have to make 2 million a year. And so for us, it's a bright future, diversified customer base, mostly automotive, but probably going to expand into into some larger square footage in terms of warehousing space, new technology on the grinding front, and then just having a lot of fun helping our customers and making the world's best shims. Very cool. Awesome. <laughs> hey, you got to see them. I mean, that's just- You really do. I it? wish I had some. You know you what? I'll see you. I'll send you some shims. You'll love it. We all love shiny objects. What's your right? favorite color? We can get them in different colors. Oh. I'll get them. Uh, AMI blue, of course. Okay. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and Julian, you want you want to talk a bit about the, the future of AMI? Yeah. So can we I get think, a quick intro of a of, of AMI? Yeah. Uh, so just in brief, uh, company dates back to 1903. Uh, my grandfather was actually just doing deliveries for a rubber stamp manufacturing company out of Manhattan. Um, World War II rolled around. He went away to be a pilot in the war. Um, dropped went, rations. Yep. Served the front lines, dropping food and supplies. Wow. Um, and then when he came back, he went into sales and he rose to be the top salesperson. The owner of the company at that time, American Stamp, um, did not have children or a succession plan for the business. So they worked out a deal where he kind of purchased them over time. Um, Fast forward, uh, my father came into the business and um, he was introduced to a German company that sold metal wheel numbering machines. So if you've seen a bank, them, you know, stamping pages with a metal numbering machine. Um, He got the exclusive distribution rights for that um, company in North America, uh, the Reiner company. And... Then fast forward again, um, we kind of helped Reiner to develop um, the first handheld inkjet system with a self-traversing head, so the head moves back and forth in the system. Um, And that was about 20-ish years ago, and then we came on about 11 years ago, um, and I met somebody who was much more in the high-speed automated side of our business, so I started to become educated on that side of the business. And... um, we really just saw all the possibilities and all the gaps in the market. And um, there's a lot of fragmentation going on. So we just realized that if you put together the right product mix that fits the primary package, so the can, the bottle, the small box, the little bag, and then the secondary where that where those primary packages go, and then you know the tertiary, the master case, or the palette, and have solutions for all of those, um, <clears throat> that there was a big need and there's a few players that really are the 800 pound gorillas in our space. Um, But based upon the way that they serve the customer, um, there's a lot of customers in, you know, their B minus C and D, which are still huge companies that fit us perfectly. And we can really give them a much more personal touch and provide a very high quality um, equal solution to the big players and give them really high level of service. So, um, that's kind of how we've been winning our business. And over the nice. last several years, we've brought on a veteran team, including Bill Allen here, who you have on, um, to really fill out our team. And so the future is um, becoming a real vertically integrated um, marking coding supplier for primary, secondary, and tertiary packaging, um, material handling, as well as the software suites that kind of oversee the manufacturing line. Um, 
So that's where I kind of see it. And actually something I'd like to stink with both of you on is my idea for giving back to the community. I wanted it to be driven by our um, employees. So having employees pick what's the most meaningful thing to them. So for instance, we work with food, beverage, um, pharma, like figuring out how to give back. So if we sell a printer to a food company, you know, donating to, you know, feed hungry children. If we're for pharma, figuring out how to supply medicine. So it sounds like both of you guys have a lot of experience in this space. So it's something that I'd love to sync with you guys after um, and great. see how we can. Yeah, that would love reality. That. that's wonderful. That's yeah. that's Very good. All right. Um, so I don't know if you want to, if you want to call out your uh, website, where can people find you, Dana and sure. Jeff and your individual? <laughs> Businesses. Our website, yep, is pocketsfullofsun.org. And then ours is northerninndmfg.com. Cool. Beautiful. And I'll, I'll put a link down there, too, um, Perfect. underneath great. for you guys. Thank you. Very yeah, cool. thank you. Cool. Yeah, yeah, we but, really appreciate the, the time today. Yeah. And anytime we can be together Absolutely. and, you know, have a little – have a little brother-sister rivalry going on on the yeah. camera yeah. is a good thing. And <laughs> How often do you guys get to actually see each yeah. other? Yeah. How often do you guys get to see oh, each other? Probably four, three, four times a year. Yeah. He comes down for our big fundraisers, you know, holidays. I come home for summer when it's warm in Michigan, you know. <laughs> Not enough, but yeah, yeah probably four or five yeah. times yeah, a year. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. A lot, which you like to see other brothers and sisters. Let yeah, them yeah. I, I'm loving seeing you guys <laughs> really nice. here in the same office too. It's so cool. fun. It is cool. Yep. Very cool. Awesome. All right. With okay. that, uh, we will sign off and thank you. All right. Sounds everyone. great. Thank you all very thank much. Thank you guys so much. Thank, for having thank you guys for being on. Really, really appreciate it. We appreciate it too. Okay. You know, Bye. Awesome Bye. Work. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. Waiters, big